<laughs> Eight, 18 years later, and I'm back. Um, I started working on the uh, back issues for the magazine in like 1998, 1999. Then uh, kind of took a hiatus and, you know, fun building rockets and dealing with life events. So. You know, I, I didn't meet my goal to um, keep it as current as I had intended. Uh, but from what I have been told, the first year that it was available on the NAR website, it was the most downloaded uh, thing on the NAR website. So apparently our membership did appreciate it. Um, so I started out, used the same format that I used when I had done the other um, index, the other two uh, versions of it. Although I did make some changes based on the way we're able to cover events um, and to, to be more reflective of that. I had, um, initially I had, you know, under the general articles, I had things like pre NARAM articles, piston launchers, that sort of thing. I moved the NARAM, pre NARAM articles to actual NARAM year um, because, again, I've noticed with the availability of the NAR website and the NARAM.org website, most of that information now is there. And way back when at 45, I had to write a, uh, and thank goodness for my friends to help me make that article make some sense. Uh, but we're not getting the pre NARAM articles uh, <laughs> anymore. So that's fine. Just move those into the, the NARAM events. Um, scale has been broken down a little bit more. Um, broke, we have, we've had one article on classic scale. So that's <coughs> got its own separate, separate, separate place. Giant scale, sports scale, and peanut scale. There's also information about that in space history. Um, so it is very difficult sometimes to decide where you where things really should go. And I told Bunny when I saw him, his presentation, his articles about uh, growing up wallops. Is that in our person? Is that in our history? Is that in our places? Um, it can go any place. So when he wrote it as a general article, it went into our people. Uh, when he presented at Narcon, it stayed with the Narcon article. And this is one of the places where I moved, and my formatting is not liking me at all, uh, moving the piston launchers into construction, um, as well as the other articles. I was very happy to break in and add a new section for education programs. Um, programs for students and teachers, ARLIS, um, uh, rocketry for scouts, rocketry for 4-H. Um, and we also have some articles even written by some of the Canon uh, recipients, so, which is um, really super that um, they're doing that. The Student Launch Initiative and TARC, they weren't around in 1999. Uh, so th that was a completely new new addition. So bump that down. Uh, event coverage, again, based on the way we are now able to cover our events. Conventions, most of these were the old MITCON, PITCON, all those con uh, conventions. <laughs> Switched internets to just FAI space modeling because we, again we have articles of the team selection, we have articles on the, uh, the uh, com uh, competition um, every year. You know the hobby shows like what used to be known as RICTA. Um, the international coverage 
in addition to the internets, we have some coverages from Canada. Um, we had it there, and then there was even columns from from tracking north uh, that was in there. And again, because of the the coverage, um, we could you know already had a section for NARAM, but then broke Narcon out of conventions and broke NSL out of you know sport launches. And regionals and open, which actually now has become a historical event, and then you know other other sport launches. The general, just kind of the catch-all for the columns, that includes like editor space, um, the unstable rocketeer, captain's log, the Ibar chronicles, um, the Cato chronicles, going into to columns general, the people, places, and then the, you know, the catch-all things. Uh, high power, you know, just basically the articles there in our history, um, you know, the people, and then we also have a whole section for section highlights that was a major part of the magazine at one point. That's, um, again, with, with the Every club has a has a well, I say every club, but you know most clubs have their websites, so everybody could go find out what's happening at Wush or uh, SSS or you know whatever. Um, launch you know, the next section on launch equipment uh, that was launch equipment period, but I put and site on there because. Particularly during Ted Cochran's uh, presidency, he wrote several articles about launch safety. So I felt that that needed to be, you know, delineated out. I mean, we've got, you know, if you don't, if your club doesn't have a launch controller, look at launch controllers. There's tons of different plans for that. And then talking about launch clips, pads, towers, um, that sort of thing. Um, and again, I'm sorry that my formatting hasn't held up here, but motors, information about motors, igniters, starters, and such, general information, information on articles on clustering and staging, and then the, um, and the, the next section then is radio control gl gliders, both articles and plans, reviews, it used to be books, but now it's books and other media because DVDs have been uh, reviewed, you know, reviews of kits, reviews of manufacturers and suppliers, uh, products, space history, technical and theoretical, and that's like the Woodward Chronicles, um, you know, the um, a whole bunch of math that I don't understand, <laughs> and um, telemetry, um, al altimeters, or that type of thing. This is just an example of you know how I formatted the um, information building of one one fifty eight scale discovery from two thousand one a space odyssey. It's written by Matt Johnson, SR Sport Rocketry. May, June 2012, volume 54, number three, pages 31 through 38. Um, one of the things with, with Nar um, Narcon you know, and NARAM uh, the, and the international um, FAI space modeling, I have done that, not alphabetical, but chronological, so if you want to see an overview of that. Um, and also during during this time, um, we have CDs now of the magazine magazines that's available through NARTS, um, and there have been a couple of other indexes put online um, on the NAR, NAR website as well. So, and I think it's very important for us to give this to our membership. We had, the last editor space talked about building the rumble bee. If you don't know what the rumble bee is, you can just go in, put find, 
Rumble Bay, and we'll find out what the editor was talking about. <laughs> so, any questions? I was wondering how many hours it took you to compile this. this I refuse to keep track. <laughs> I refuse to keep track because that th that was the only expense that I really had. Um, because at least this time I could just go to where I store my NAR magazines and pull them all out. Before I was borrowing magazines from friends and going to the AMA library in Muncie. Uh, to, to get information. So it was a very labor intensive um, uh, job. But I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. I learned so much about NAR history. Um, I watched the evolution of the magazine. It has a, I think it has a very nice ebb and flow to it now. Um, and seeing the changes, we don't don't have to put launch windows in anymore. You know, uh, do a list, still do a listing of the of the sections, but you know that's available online, so that's no longer in the magazine. So we can do other things. We're back to color again, so we can do all kinds of pictures <laughs> and um, make it a very personal uh, magazine for our membership. That's a good question. So where would we find this index on the web if we were, after this um, project is turned in, it will be, this index will be put on the web somewhere, I think, right? Right, So yes. where would it go? Where would we find it? Well, that's the problem. It's very convoluted right now where so it I'm is. I'm not sure I'd want to put it under the R&D reports because no one would see it. Right. Yeah. Uh, I envision it being, re you know, replaced uh, with what is already online, but you have to, um, Kind of search for it, but if you go into the NART section, you know, NARTS is very nice about saying, well, you know, with the CDs, you know, see the back indexes, see the back back magazine indexes. So that was very. So maybe NARTS is the yeah. So we, you know, we'll try to try to work on that to see if we get a little more user friendly. Okay. Uh, quick question, Lila. I and. Uh, when I, when I caught in, in your written report, you mentioned there was some difficulty in deciding where to place a given article. Mm -hmm. Had you given any thought to saying, thinking of and rather than or, well, it could go here and it could go here, or was that just going to be too monumental a pain? No, I did that on the original document uh, where I put, put things a couple of places. Mm -hmm. But this thing is getting big now. Admittedly. Uh, we started, this is basically the first edition, one year later, because that's going to fall on the floor, it went to this size. Now it's 158 pages, mm -hmm. but actually now it goes on a thumb drive, and there's pl still plenty of room to <laughs> Um, so yes, I have, I did do the or, uh, particularly early on too with the um, scale information, uh, you know, class, you know, all, this, all the wonderful Saturn V articles, you know, yeah, they go in space history, but they also go in, in, um, you know, in, in scale data, you know, as well, so, um, you know, and I just kind of, Use my best guess, use my judgment to see. So. so as you were looking through the issues in the old index and what things did you run across that you thought, I we I miss having this in the magazine or we should have an article about this. Um I can't say that I really miss anything, you know, in the ma magazine. I think I think the magazine has evolved, you know, and we were able to do more um, Nissel coverage, we were able to do more Narcon coverage, um, you know, we are able to, 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 to be a pretty broad-based 
you know, magazine. But as far as saying something, oh, geez, I wish this were still in there, I can't really say, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that I can think of anything. Do we have time for one question, at sure. least, from the audience? Yes. Yeah, as if page one was 1973 to what, current day, is that just as far back as the magazine go? 73 there were other magazines prior to that or newsletters or whatever but this is the first um, American uh, not American space modeling uh, model rocketeer so that's when when that started um, so that's that's when I and this is basically what is available to the membership prior to that, those those publications are more difficult to to get a hold of. I've, I've got a whole box full of them. Well, I'm glad that somebody does. Yeah. So. Is this available through Narcissus? Yeah, but I mean, if those could become available, then they could be included in the index. He's going to give them to you. Okay. Yeah, I'll get in touch with them. Yeah. All right. Nerds will have Sounds to like scan them in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Awesome.